Hello, this is a supplement to lecture 11 on uh, gas elimination, and I'm just going to do an example of solving a problem, uh, solving this uh, linear system uh, by coding the gas elimination method. So let's go ahead and, and get started. Um, so here I have an array that I've defined, uh, excuse me, an A array and a B array. And remember that this is for the problem A dot X is equal to B. All right, this is a square system. It's a five by five system. Um, so let's go ahead and start out two and define our length um, of B for our N, which is going to be uh, useful for what we want to know. Okay, so remember the forward elimination algorithm in gas. So there's two parts to the gas elimination algorithm. There's the forward elimination part, and then there's the back substitution part. The forward elimination is going to try and make uh, an upper triangular matrix, okay, with a zeros below the diagonal, and back substitution is then going to start at the bottom and solve and work our way back up. So the index notation, this always helps me when I code it, is to write down the index notation. So for the forward elimination, it's um, AIJ gets updated, and I subtract this ratio, which is AIK divided by AKK multiplied by AKJ. All right, and um, let's label what these indices are going to be. K is going to be um, looping over the diagonals that I'm going to count, okay, the columns and the diagonals. So I'm going to call that diagonal, okay. And if I think about that, the diagonals are going to go from starting at 0 but ending before here. So it's going to be 0, 2, and minus 2, okay. Um, I um, are the rows here. So the rows, as I go down, I'm going to loop down each row and make them zeros. So they're going to start at k plus 1. So they're the rows. And they're k plus 1. And I have to go all the way to the bottom, so n minus 1. So this, the diagonals only go to n minus 2, but the rows have to go all the way to n minus 1. Okay. And then j is the columns. All right? And these are going to loop over all of the, the columns in each row. And they're going to start here at the end and go to the end here. But they, but when I move down to, say, this diagonal, it's going to start here and move down. So it only has to start at k. And it goes all the way to the end, to n minus 1. All right, so let's code that and see how it goes. So I'm going to make three loops for k in range 0 to n minus 1. Why did I do n minus 1 when I said n minus 2? Remember that this is an inclusive there. Then I'll make four i in range uh, uh, k plus 1 to n, same reason there, non-inclusive at the end, for j in range k to n minus 1, we won't put the n there. Okay, um, so that should take care of all of these loops, and now what I need to do is code um, this uh, formula, right? So I'm taking aij, the value here, I'm going to subtract the ratio with the diagonal above it. So I need to get that ratio. Notice that that ratio depends on i and k, but it doesn't depend on j. So I don't need to recompute it every time in j. So I'm going to say ratio is equal to a i k, ooh, k divided by a k k. Okay? So that should give me that ratio here. So 2 divided by 5, right? And if you're unfamiliar with the gas elimination algorithm, you can check out my other videos. I have a couple other videos where I go over the gas elimination algorithm. And if you're in my class, this is, these are lecture videos. Now, for the last two lectures, we've been talking about this algorithm, OK? Um, so there's AIK divided by AKK, OK? And then now, each time, I need to take AIJ. Okay, I need to take each one of these elements and update it using um, the ratio multiplied by the row that the diagonal is on. So I'm going to subtract the ratio multiplied by the row the diagonal is on. Well, what row is the diagonal? It's on uh, uh, the row k, and then I have to go over all the j's. Okay, so a, k, j. And that's what this uh, says right here. All right, so now um, once I've done that, I need to make sure to update the b vector as well. So the b also has uh, uh, um, uh, index notation for it. And so bi is going to equal also bi minus the same ratio, aik divided by akk multiplied by, but instead of akj, it's bk. Okay? So that's taking b at k, or, or, or excuse me, b at i. So if I'm on the second one here, um, I'm going to take the, this ratio there, 
multiply it by the B above it, all right, and add it into there. So now I'm going to put that down here, B at I uh, minus equals ratio multiplied by B at K, okay? So the minus equals takes care of all that stuff right there. There's my ratio, the same as that one, multiplied by BK. Why don't I put it inside this J loop? Well, I don't want to keep subtracting it every time I go down the columns. So I'm going to go down the columns for the J loop, and then one more time, I do the B right there at the very end, okay? So that is the forward elimination algorithm. So before we go on, let's print out A and make sure that we really got um, something that was um, upper triangular. So let me print A and B here. So A and B very first, okay? And then let me print A and B down here and make sure that this makes sense. Okay, so there's the ones at the top. I'm gonna to put one more space in there just so we can see just an extra line to make sure we can see. Okay, there's the original values. That should be the same as that. Now, after I go down here, I've got zeros there, zeros there, zeros there, zeros there. It's an upper triangular matrix. I'm not sure it's 100% correct yet. I may have to debug here when we get to the end, but I think this is right based on what I've coded up here. Okay, and then I notice here that this first one shouldn't be touched but all of these other values down here should be changed, and indeed they are. Okay, so um, that works for there. We can comment that out. Now let's work on the back substitution. So now in back substitution, um, I have the following index notation. I don't want to tab over, go back here. Oh, so in back substitution, I'm just, um, what I have is I have x n minus one is equal to b n minus one divided by a n minus one n minus one. Okay, so what that means, right, is that I'm taking this guy here in the bottom of B, and I'm dividing by this diagonal, right, and that gives me the, the very first one. So I solve for the bottom one, okay, and in addition, man, it wants to tab over. I have XI is equal to, and then what I need to do is take B sub I, so I need to take the next B, and I need to subtract minus 4 times X uh, N minus 1. Okay, so I need to subtract the sum over J of uh, X, or excuse me, A I J multiplied by X J. Okay, so I need to make sure I do the sum over this one, because when I go up to here, then I'm going to have that one and that one. When I go up to here, I'm going to have that one, that one, and that one. Everything that's off the diagonal I have. Okay, so I need to sum over that J. And then at the very end, I need to divide by the diagonal A I, I, okay? So, uh, because that's the last piece here, and I need to divide by that guy, or that guy, or that guy, depending on what row I'm in. Okay, so what are our ranges on these? And it's bugging me that it keeps doing that. Maybe I'm doing something wrong with spider. Okay, so what are the ranges I'm gonna need to do here? Okay, well, I, I'm gonna count up the rows, right? So I don't do the bottom one, so I'm gonna start at I equals N minus two, and then I'm going to go n minus 1 all the way up to 0. So that's my range on i. Okay, and then my range on j is my sum here. So remember, my sum starts one more over from the diagonal. So j is going to equal i plus 1, and I guess I've been writing 2. It's going to go i plus 1 all the way to the end to n minus 1. So I'm going to write, I'll rewrite that here as 2, 0. Okay, so that's my back substitution, how that should work. So let's write the loops. Um, so I'm going to need this J loop to be the inner loop because it's going to do that every row. So I'll start with I here in range N minus 2 to 0, okay, going by minus 1. All right, important that I do that. Now I'm thinking I want to test something because if I remember right, if I do a range like this, it's not going to be inclusive of 0. So let me just make sure. So if I do range N minus 2, 0, minus 1. Um, oh, is that going to print it out for me? Let's see. If I do numpy, it'll show me, right? That's right. So numpy is the same thing. 3, 2, 1. Okay, I want to have 0. So I actually need to make this guy go to minus 1. I guess I can just print it out in my loop here, just to make sure. So let me print that out in my loop. And look, 3, 2, 1, 0. If I make that guy a 0, look at that right there. It goes three, two, one, but I want to go all the way to zero. Remember, the end is non-inclusive in Python ranges, 
So I want to go all the way to zero. So I have to say that one counts up to like minus one. That's kind of a weird way of thinking about it, but that's how it works. Okay. Oh, don't want to do print. And then I have my inner loop for j n range. Now I do i plus one to n. Okay. That one's done there. Now before I do any of that, I can I don't need this in loops at all. So I can do x at n minus one is equal to b at n minus one divided by a n minus one, n minus one. Boom. Okay. Then I will, uh, uh, now I will do my inner loop here. Okay. So what happens in this inner loop is I do this sum. So I'm going to initiate a sum variable before here. So I'm going to call this sum j. And I'm going to say it's zero. And then each time through the loop, sum j is going to add on aij times xj. So a i j multiplied by x j okay and then once i'm done with all of that now i can now that i've summed it up now i just need to subtract b i or that from b i so i take b sub i minus sum over j all right and x at i is going to equal that guy divided by the diagonal this piece right there divide by that diagonal a I, I. Okay, so let me run that. Oh, look, it's I'm already seeing a problem. It tells me I haven't identified x. X, I need to make up an x. Well, that's easy enough to do. I can say x is numpy dot zeros, the uh, size of n right there. Okay, so now I've given an x. It'll start out with zeros. This is complaining on me. It doesn't like a. That's because I need to have a capital A. Okay, so let's run that guy. Let's see what happens. It runs. Let me print out at the end. Print A. Let me print B. Let me print X. All right? A, B, X. Let's print A, B, X. Now, I don't know if that's the right answer, so let's go ahead and check that answer. Okay, so we're going to cheat to check our answer because it's a pain to check. So to do that, there's two ways we can do it. So one is we can use the numpy uh, linear solver. I'm not going to do it that way because um, if you have to solve it, uh, I don't know. I just I'm not going to do that way. Instead, I'm going to calculate the residual. Okay, the residual is a dot x minus b. Okay, so if I do a times x, remember my my uh, my problem is a times x equals b. So if I do a times x minus b, it should give me a bunch of zeros, and then I'm going to take the norm of that. And remember, the norm is where you go through a vector and you square every element and you add them all up and you take the square root. Okay, just like the distance formula. The distance formula is the norm of a, of a vector. Okay, so let me go through and I can calculate um, the dot. I can numpy dot dot um, a times x. Okay, you have to be careful with this because the a and the x um, are different than the a up here. So what I'm going to do is come up here and make a copy. So I'm going to say a copy is equal to numpy dot copy of a because we're changing a as we go along. So I want a clean copy. So b copy is numpy dot copy of b. Okay. So I should be able to look at a copy and b copy and see that they're the same as I had up at the top. So if I print those out, notice that a copy and b copy are the same as above, but a and b are not the same. Okay. So I'm going to do numpy dot a times x minus b, okay, and maybe I can print that just so you can see what that looks like, because for some reason the norm seems to get people. Okay, so look, that has just a vector right there, and then I'm going to take numpy dot linalg dot norm of that vector, okay, and that's going to give me just a single number, and look at that one. That norm now. Maybe I can put that here so you can see that that's really the residual. Residual right there. Okay, the residual is tiny. Okay, so I know that my value of x is the right value. Okay, because I did a times x equals b. Okay, if I want to check the other one, I can use the solver. So I can do numpy dot linear algebra dot solve a b. Okay, and that should give me what x is. So this is uh, numpy solver um, x equals, all right? And if I do that, I get 6.9, whatever. 
that's the same value there, minus 2.49, minus 2.49, et cetera, et cetera, same value that I got above. Okay, so that's how you code. I was lucky, all right, I just was looking at this, so I was able to do it without any mistakes, which is totally not normal for me, but I was lucky I was able to code gas elimination, um, doing both the forward elimination step and the backward substitution step. All right, that's all I got for you.